guys and welcome back to Mummy Cooks Homemade. My name's Hayley and this is the day in the life of my kitchen. So here I made some bread the night before. This is a breakfast bread, it's got fruit in, it's for toasting. So that's what everybody's going to have for breakfast today. I used a different, I usually use a strong white bread flour. I used a, a light wheat flour. It turned out much softer and really it needs to be a bit firmer so I'll stick to the um, white bread flour for this lesson learned and all that <laughs> it looks like it's not been toasted but that's by Amy <laughs> if it's got any brown on it whatsoever she ain't interested she thinks that's it, it's burnt you couldn't even spread this butter that's how cold it is ridiculous it melts in. So hope everybody's been okay. There we are. So we also have pack ups to do. Don't you just love doing pack up? I don't know what's with a pinky finger hanging up there. <laughs> I can assure you I'm not dainty. <laughs> I don't know what that pinky finger was doing, but it had a mind of its own. <laughs> one down, one to go. They don't have a packed lunch every day. It depends what's on the menu at school. Um, if it's something like a curry, then um, Caitlin's not allowed to have that anyway because of coconut and all the rest of it. And Amy wouldn't eat it. So that's the days like this that they would both have a pack up together. If it's something like that or a sweet and sour, they wouldn't eat that either. But they'll eat, eat mine. It's weird. Maybe because at school they put like the pineapple in and peppers and stuff. Whereas I don't. I don't like all that stuff. So that's maybe what it is. So yeah. Um, I mean yesterday they had a roast dinner. Roast turkey. With, at school with mashed potatoes and vegetables. And, and a pudding. And I really enjoyed that. These bags are absolutely fantastic. Perfect size for sandwiches. I uh, had them left over from Christmas. So here's me trying to get everything used up, look, so it don't go to waste. Who do I give cheese crispies to? I can't remember now. I can't remember. Amy. <laughs> I know because of the salt and vinegar crisps. <laughs> so. Fruit. Then you get these snack size bags as well. Again, these, these bags are great if you want portion control too. I use these for the fruit inside the pet lunches, plus they also have a break time where they're allowed to take fruit, so they take snack for that, which is usually grapes or raisins, to be honest. <laughs> Amy doesn't eat um, as many 
as Caitlin does. I won't be surprised if she gives half of them away, you know. Last two. Let's get rid of those. That's the way I see it. When I see an empty box coming up, I think that's got rid of those. <laughs> My two, they do love mince pies. So they've got a sandwich, some fruit, a pack of crisps, cheese, and a little mince pie. So since the start of COVID, they are allowed to take a juice bottle to class itself. Before that, they wasn't allowed. If they wanted to drink, they had to get a bit of water out the fountain, water fountain. But they are allowed to take um, a juice bottle now. It's supposed to be water, but I always put juice in it. Because I'm a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> One day they'll tell me off. And then the blue ones are for the pack lunch boxes. And someone stood next to me, who is it? Caitlin. I could tell by the top and the bottoms and the socks, it's Caitlin. She's inspecting what's going in the pack up. I'm sure I mixed them up then. Yeah, I did. Look, I took the crisps out. Caitlin has the plane, which goes into the lighter bag. <laughs> Amy has the salt and vinegar. Yeah, I did. I swapped them up. And I put notes like that into the lunch bags. Especially more for Caitlin, the oldest one. She's not like me. She's low in confidence she's yeah she's an emotional girl that sort of thing so we do try and encourage her a bit so they've cleaned up after they've gone to school I've had a moan. Now I'm doing a quiche. <laughs> and you might think, what's that in that pastry? That is poppy seeds. I usually put poppy seeds in the base. So Steve likes everything in a quiche. He's got some leftover spicy chicken that I made the day before so I'm going to tear that up and he's going to have that with some bacon and some like peppers and tomatoes and onion my kids not a chance if they see any kind of tomato or pepper or anything inside a quiche they're not eating it but they uh, if they think it's just meat in there they'll eat it so I did get onions in and they didn't notice but I had to chop them up really small. So this is the big quiche pan. So this is the kids one. Don't ever worry about cracks and stuff. Pastry is pastry. It will, it will just mush back together, look. You squeeze it, it'll just go back together.
just taking over the over just, just taking off the overhang you could either use a rolling pin to do that or just use your hand like i do Based on. And that is the worst part for me of making quiche. <laughs> I actually didn't notice a piece of shell that I dropped in. <laughs> and Steve found it in his. <laughs> I've never had a piece of shell in the quiche before, so that was a first. <laughs> That was me rushing, you see. That's all it was. Yeah, he found it in his. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't have been laughing if it was mine. So if I was just making one quiche, I'd use five eggs, one pot of cream, a splash of milk. But because I'm making two, I've used eight eggs, two cream, and it was just enough. So I would advise um, adding some milk into that if you're going to do two. So I've cooked up some bacon. This is the kids one, so this will be the boring one. <laughs> Chuck some cheese on the bottom. And the, that's their onion look. And by the time that's cooked, it's gonna disappear. I don't think they mind the taste of onion, you know. It's just the look and texture of it. So I've already done Steve's, I think, because some of that, um, Egg mixture's gone, so he's cut that off for time. I do have a quiche recipe, so if you would like that linked, I can link that. Just ask me in the comments. The bread recipe from the morning, I also have that. If you would like that linked, let me know. And I'll do that for you as well. I don't have a recipe for the pet lunch boxes, so... <laughs> Throw some cheese on there, do it all delicately, like I'm doing it. <laughs> and that was the two quiches that went done. So Steve's was a smaller one and it had everything in it. Plus bacon and chicken. And that was the kids one. Plenty of bacon, egg, cheese and the sneaky onion. So here I'm making a one tray dish. There was a lovely lady who was a subscriber who asked for a one pot or one tray chicken dish. So you can swap, I use chicken sausage, but you can obviously swap that out for anything you like. If you want chicken drumsticks, another flavor of sausage, whatever, put it on there. A nice easy dinner all in one. Throw it in the oven. Happy days. Sorry guys, I was stretching there. <laughs> Things you can't see when you're doing a voiceover. <laughs> so just chopping up some veg that I want on there. I think I used um, shallot, carrot, mushrooms. Don't cut the mushrooms really small if you're going to do this. Just half them. Because they do lose some of their size when they're cooking anyway. And don't wash them 
And here's me just chopped it into three. <laughs> there you go, look. And there's the potatoes I'm going to use. What I'm going to do is pop them onto the tray and squash them down. You're going to think, oh, all this is not going to fit on there. It does. It shrinks down. Don't worry about overcrowding to start with. It does shrink down, trust me. If your potatoes are really small, then I won't bother with the parboiling. This is just because I had a few bigger ones on there. But once I've put the potatoes on, that's it, it's a one pan dish. And that's all I'm doing. Just crushing a bit so that it gets some crispy edges when it bakes. And that's all I do to them. Push down, you've got to be careful not to push down so much that you actually mash it. The times I've done that. And this is garlic oil. And we're going to put it in the oven at gas 5. S&P if you want S&P. I'll put it in at gas 5 until it's cooked. I mean, every, I can't tell you how long because every oven's different. An electric oven's going to cook at a different rate than my gas oven. And you know how it goes, guys. Just keep an eye on it. That's the chicken sausage. They do look anemic, but that's because the chicken. They are fully cooked. But that, that was it. All I did halfway through, once everything was half cooked, was chuck the sausage on. And everything is cooked through. Such an easy meal. And you can swap it out for any meat that you want, I suppose. I would obviously cook it a lot longer if you're going to use chicken legs. But yeah, everything was cooked through. Carrots. Mushrooms. Give me some mushrooms. And that was a nice simple tea. Yum yum. I'm doing this voiceover in the morning. I'm hungry now. Oh, I shouldn't do them in the morning. So, I am now going to make a loaf of bread for breakfast the next morning. This is a multi-grain loaf and it is so soft. It's absolutely wonderful. If you would like this one, this one is not on the channel yet. But I can put the recipe underneath in the description box should you wish. This is a 900 gram loaf, so it's a big loaf. And I cooked it at gas four for 40 minutes. And it's part whole meal and part strong white bread flour. Some oats. You think for a mixed seed loaf you'd have to put loads in, but it's not, it's just two and a half tablespoons. It's quite surprising. And some millet grain. These things are worth buying because that's like a kilo bag. But this recipe only takes 30 grams. So it is going to last you a long time. So if you do like bread and you like different flavours and textures of bread, it is worth getting. Again with this one, with a bulgur. 
it's only 30 grams and it's a 500 gram bag so that's going to do a lot of loaves so it's well worth getting now the white bread flour I do get through some bread well flour <laughs> and bread So my youngest one, she liked the bread, but she didn't like the seeds. So she literally sat there with a slice of this bread and picked the seeds out. I mean, seriously. Mind you, I suppose there's a lot of kids out there that probably would have done as well. <laughs> it's not just mine. Eldest one liked it, but youngest one picked the seeds out. So, yeah. Always make sure you put your salt opposite your yeast. There's a the sugar. The bottom of that. Oh my god. You know, I'm straight in the kitchen after doing this voiceover. I can't see that because <laughs> once I've got it on top of the cooker, I then I take the thing out. But now I've just seen it. Yeah, I'm going straight back in there in a minute. Wipe out the bottom of me <laughs> bread machine. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Actually, I think I might just stick the over pipe in there and over all the flour out. <laughs> see there I am wiping the front of it look and I have no idea that underneath at the bottom that's spilled out there is all that <laughs> oh, that's funny so yeah I left this on the dough cycle turned it out and then put it into the oven I don't cook my breads in the bread machine. I don't like how they turn out. But that's my own preference. So yeah, let me know if you want this uh, bread recipe. And I shall stick it in the description box for you. You know, since this COVID thing, I don't think I've ever used me, think, me bread machine so much. And that was it when it came out. It was an absolutely lovely loaf of bread. It was. So thanks so much for watching guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe only if you want to and we'll see you again next week bye guys <laughs>